Hey, hey, everybody, how you doing? Today we're going to take a look at income elasticity of demand, which essentially is the impact of a change in income on the quantity demanded of your product or of any product. And again, this video is going to assume a basic understanding of income elasticity of demand and will serve as a way of um, reminding you of how one could use income elasticity of demand, or YED, um, in a real-world application. Okay, so the big equation for YED, or income elasticity of demand, is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of, say, your product over the percentage change in income. So it's the impact of income on the demand for your particular country. And this might be helpful if you... If you um, own a business and you sell cars and incomes in a country have gone up, then you, assuming that cars are a normal good, which they are, then you can assume that demand for your cars would go up. But if, a, if the demand in your country, or rather the incomes in your country, were, on the f were going down during a time of economic recession, if you have a normal good, like a car, then you can imagine that the demand for your product would go down and then you would have to make certain changes in, um, in your supply. A nice way of looking at this is this a nice little little spectrum I made up here, right? Income elasticity of demand. And there's some a couple things that you really need to know. First of all, everything starts right here at zero. Okay, so as you do the equation, the sign obtained from the equation is important, right? In in the case of yen, the sign tells us whether the product we're looking at is a normal good or an inferior good. And remember that the demand for a normal good would rise, rises as income rises, and the demand for an inferior good would fall as income rises. Okay, so for normal goods, the value of yed is going to be positive, and that's represented by this, by everything to the right of zero, obviously, all right, towards positive. And everything that, if it comes out to be a negative number, then we'll know that our good that we are supplying to the marketplace is indeed an inferior good. So... On top of that, not only that, when we do the, the equation, we we'll also will find out the nature of our good. Is our good that we're selling a necessity, say like bread, or is it um, a luxury good like a car or something that uh, isn't necessary for our daily survival or our daily, um, our daily lives? And you can see also that the value, so if the value of yet is between zero and one, or say less than one, but is a positive number, then we know that our good is a necessity, and therefore we can expect that it'll be fairly income inelastic, which means to say that there will be a, f a relatively smaller change in demand based on the uh, com when compared to the percentage change in income. So, for example, take a necessity good like bread, right? No matter bread, I like to think of necessity goods or those are the things that we don't. They'll be like the last things that we would give up right, if our incomes would fall. So they're necessities. So relatively speaking, they're going to be relatively inelastic. Our demand for bread might go down a little bit, but bread's not really the first thing we're going to cut out of our, our lives um, if our incomes were to fall. Likewise, um, there, you can only consume so much bread, right? So, you know, if our family, for example, consumes two loaves of bread a week, now if all of a sudden we were to become really, really wealthy and our incomes were to go way up, it's not like all of a sudden we're going to be able to start consuming more bread, I mean, maybe we would spend a little bit more money on bread, maybe buy some pita bread or some sort of specialty bread. But relatively speaking, the change in, in our demand um, is going to be relatively inelastic compared to the change in our income, as opposed to, say, uh, a luxury good. A luxury good, or some people call them superior goods, are products that have high income elasticity, and therefore the demand for them changes significantly when our income rises, which is to say, as people have more income and have satisfied their needs, they begin to purchase products that are wants, things that aren't essential, right? Something like going on a foreign ho holiday in a foreign country, airline travel. Um, I use the example very often because I live here in Santiago, Chile, of, of the ski resorts. You know, one of the first things that you're going to cut out if you were to lose income um, would be trips up to go skiing, which could cost you easily three to four hundred dollars in a single day. But if your income goes up, right, those might be something that you would start doing. And maybe if you get wealthier and wealthier, you end up spending even more time. Uh, you are able to afford three hundred dollar days more often. Um, so relatively speaking, they become income el income elastic, which is to say the consumption of these products would go up higher than the percentage change in our income. 
So there you have it. Income elasticity of demand, or YED, and what it tells us about the good that we are selling. If it, the, there is a positive outcome of the equation and it's less than one, we know that our good is a necessity and it could be considered income inelastic. If the outcome of the equation is greater than one and positive, then we know that it's a luxury good and that it's, relatively speak, it's income elastic. And therefore, both in both cases, those would be normal goods. If the outcome of the equation is less than zero, no matter how great or small, we know that it's an inferior good. And that information would be helpful to us as suppliers in the marketplace. And there you have it, income elasticity of demand. Talk to you soon.